Uh, our guest in this segment is Tara Rogers. Uh, Tara, good morning. Thank you for coming in. Good morning. Thank you for having me. How was your route in this morning with these roads? Interesting as always. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, th I think you said you passed a couple of accidents along yeah, the way. Yeah, a couple accidents on the way in. Um, nothing new. Like you said, everybody drives a little faster than they should in this kind of weather. Yeah, let's all slow down out there too. Yes. Uh, Tara, you have a, uh, a very sad story to tell, and this involves uh, your daughter who uh, passed away at the age of 23. Yes, sir. Um, so my daughter... Cassie Slovin was born um, 99. She was 23 years old when she passed away. Do you want to hold up the picture of your daughter, too? Um, There's a camera right in front of you. Right there. there you go. Okay. This is her. Mm -hmm. um, she was very healthy, very vibrant. Um, she lived a good life, the life that she was here. Um, she started getting sick in 21. She started having seizures out of nowhere after a COVID vaccine shot. Um, she had two. She had one in July, one in August. Uh, right after that, December, she started having seizures. Um, many hospital visits, um, EEGs over and over and over again, head scans, MRIs. They couldn't figure out what was going on with her. Mm -hmm. um, so we exhausted pretty much all the avenues that we could. Um, May 1st, I got a phone call from her work saying that she was late for work and was not like her. Um, then we ended up going to the house and finding out she had passed away in her bedroom. Of an epileptic seizure? Yes. Um, we, weren't, we weren't sure what it was. Um, they did an autopsy because she was 23, um, very healthy, other than the seizures, um, and they found out that it was epilepsy. And she had not had epilepsy when she was younger? She had not. She, had a, she was very healthy all of her life. Um, no, nothing, no seizures, no major diseases, nothing like that. Um, so it was very, it was a shock to us. Um, since then I've made it my goal to help as much as I can, the Epilepsy Foundation. Um, I've raised money already. I've re we raised $1,400 our first night at Dairy Queen on Winchester Avenue, which is where she used to work. Um, from there we have more coming up, more foundation work coming up to just to raise money to raise awareness it's a very it's not rare it's very known but the symptoms and finding it in a person is very rare um i've been doing a lot of research and here to come find out there's 40 different types of epilepsy 40 four zero. 40 different types of epilepsy um how, how common or uncommon is what happened to your daughter among the general population you know, prior to me doing research, I didn't think it was very common, but it is. Um, in the younger generations, it is in the older generations as well, um, but the younger generations is where it's hitting, you know, late teens, early 20s, which is where she was. Uh, is there an idea of what percentage of our teens have epilepsy and may not even know it? Um, I don't know what the percentage is, but I know that it's, it is a lot more common than than anyone knows. Um, I spoke to someone through the Epilepsy Foundation and they said epilepsy is more of a more of a rare disease simply because it's so hard to find. It's hard to detect. Why is it so hard to detect? The research just isn't there. there the research is just ongoing trying to find ways because there's so many different types. Um, to this day, I still am unsure of exactly what kind she had. Um, it could be hereditary. It may not be hereditary. Um, on her foundation page that I've created, I have um, a ton of information. I post information on there often about um, should you wear an epilepsy bracelet? Yes, of course you should. Someone should know if some, you know, if you're in public and something happens. Um, many different kind of seizures that relate to epilepsy. Um, they are coming out with watches, kind of like an Apple Watch, where mm -hmm. it'll detect that you're going to have a seizure, and it'll send it to your emergency contact and to the local 911 so they can get there to make sure that you're okay, you need to go to the hospital or, or what have you. Um, these are all things that they're in the process of coming out with. My co-host in a former life was a volunteer firefighter, EMT, and safety engineer. John, was this something that you came across in your day doing this work? We encountered a number of <clears throat> grand mal seizures, whether they were, we were not. No, it sounds like you said grand mal seizures. Grand mal, as grand opposed mal. to petite mal. Grand mal right. is when you think seizure, 
with with all the the accompanying symptoms that's mm -hmm. a grand mal seizure um we we didn't care it wasn't we treated symptoms we didn't treat disease um mm -hmm. i was not aware quite honestly that there were fatal outcomes secondary outcomes you know a fall that that follows a seizure or what have you but i was not aware mm -hmm. that it, it was in itself a a fatal condition yes, sir. are there subtle symptoms beyond the sudden onset seizure that that people can know if they're it's just it really with her um she had a seizure she was actually getting ready for my nephew's birthday party um he was one and she her dad heard a fall in the bathroom and when he went and you know he knocked on the door she didn't answer and i think she possibly tried to get up and when she tried to get up he heard the fall again, and when he opened the door, she was having convulsions um, and a seizure. Um, she had many in her sleep. Most of her seizures were in her sleep. She would wake up, her legs would be numb and wobbly, bite mark on her tongue, um, always on the right side. Um, she was very, she lost a lot of energy. She wasn't full of life like normal. Um, but then the second seizure that she had when she was awake was, there was different symptoms from that. She kind of was going in to go to the bathroom and she felt lightheaded and she grabbed the hold of the sink and next thing she knows, she woke up in an ambulance. Um, so her, it's with there being so many different kinds of seizures and so many different kinds of epilepsy, there's just so much to look for. And that's where the problem lies in the research is that there's just so many different avenues. Now, when we, you said that the, the onset of the first seizure followed a COVID vaccine. Yeah. Is there, how closely correlated were those two events? She had her first one on July, the end of July. I don't remember the date exactly. Mm -hmm. And then her second one. The second end of, shot or second seizure? Second shot. Okay. So she had her first shot in July, end of July, her second shot at the end of August. And then the seizure started December 5th was her first one. So there's a good bit of time in, in, in between. Have you spoken to doctors? Is there a, a correlation, causation? There's suspicion? really no, they're saying that there's really no way to try to determine whether that is the case or not. Um, but there are a lot of folks I'm sure you've met who have anecdotal stories similar to yours, though. Yes, yes, there is. Um, we, I, you know, finding, you know, going through this, I am members of Facebook you know, epilepsy things that, you know, you're reading similar stories. Um, I have a couple of friends that their daughter or, you know, a friend of Cassie's that she went to school with, he's having seizures and it's, they're unexplainable. They can't find resources. He's wrecked cars, um, having a seizure. And, you know, it's just, it's more common than anyone thinks. And that's part of what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get that out there. So people, no, you know, if you're having on, you know, headaches, she was having headaches. She was having dizzy spells. Prior to the first seizure? Um, no, this was all after. after. She didn't have those before. Um, these were all after the seizure. Um, so here to come find out, we believe that they were a possibility that they were um, called absent seizures. Um, absent seizures, again, there's so many different things that go with that um, staring into a blank spot headaches, dizziness, like, you know, there's just, there's got to be a better way. I would love to find a better way. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping raising this money and the research will help get to that point. Was uh, Tara, was Cassie on uh, medication for epilepsy? She was, she was on medication. Um, she was taking Keppra. Um, she was taking 500, I think it was 500 milligrams a day, twice a day. Um, we went to her doctor in the neurologist doctor in Winchester, and he raised it to 700 twice a day. Um, because I was saying, you know, we went back in saying she was getting the lightheaded spells. She was having the headaches. She wasn't energetic. She's, this is a girl who she would get up and go to the gym in the morning, go home and shower and then go to work and then go to the gym after work if she could, you know, she, she was, was just a young, healthy, energetic 23 year old before this all started. Very much so. All right. Uh, uh, we have, we still have 10 minutes. So we've got plenty of time, but I, 
But uh, we'll, we're going to kind of circle back to this. But I want first for you to get out the information you want to get out for our audience to know about how to help in the foundation and such. Okay, so we have a couple different ways that you can help out. Um, we do have a silent auction spaghetti dinner on the 13th. It's at the Baker Heights Fire Department. Um, we will be having some tickets available at the door. We have sold uh, probably about 175 tickets as of right now. Um, so I have her Facebook page that is the um, Epilepsy Field of Sunflower Foundation in memory of Cassie Nicole Slevin. On there, I put all kinds of information about epilepsy, about seizures, things to look for, um, groups that you can join that can help you with questions that you have or anything like that. Um, we are also going to have a biker poker run in May, um, on May 4th, which we've, I've got bikers saying they're coming from Florida and Chicago and, and further, um, just to be a part of this. Um, how that works is you, you pay $15 to go in and ride your bike, go from on the routes that we have designed, get a tick or get a card and then go back and at the end, whoever wins gets whatever it is that we have at that time. All the money and proceeds go to the Epilepsy Foundation. Um, another way that you can donate is going on to the Epilepsy Foundation, the same name, the Epilepsy Field of Sunflowers in memory of Cassie Nicole Slevin. Um, you can just donate through there. Um, now, is there, there's the Epilepsy Foundation, which is national or worldwide for that matter. Yes, sir. And then there's your daughters. Is there yes. a difference in terms of how the funds are used or, or will be directed or donated? It all goes to the foundation. It's just a foundation that I opened in her name and her memory but all of it goes to towards the research of epilepsy. So all the money that you raise goes toward the, the national or yes, sir. worldwide epilepsy foundation. Yes, sir. You, you mentioned that there's just so much unknown about epilepsy and I'm wondering uh, if, if you've done enough research to know why that is because it's certainly something, epilepsy is something I've been aware of for, I'm, I'm 60, so probably 50 years of my right, life I've yeah. been familiar with the, the term. Um, the problem is they're, they they would tell us with her, um, one of the things that the neurologist said that the next time she has a seizure, take a video of it. And I'm thinking, what am I going to, why am I going to, you know, that's going to be, it's hard enough to watch your daughter go through that, let alone video it and watch it happen. There's something in the way they act or the, the way the seizure is to be able to tell what kind of seizure she's having, if it's an epileptic seizure, if it's something else. Um, I just, I don't know. There's just not enough out there. Was the medication helping? We thought, yeah, we thought so. But um, I believe that her diet, her medication was not high enough of a dosage because, of course, I got the, her medical records. And in the medical records, he said, the doctor had said something about supposed seizures. Um, the thing that kind of boggles my mind a little bit is he never once said epilepsy never once said that word and this I, is in the postmortem yeah yeah and um he his studies as a doctor was epilepsy so i'm not sure why he did you know we did a 24-hour eeg we did a three-day in the hospital no medication eeg mris head scans blood tests over and over and over again and apparently if they don't have her connected to a machine with an EEG. They don't know exactly what it is that's causing it. So she gets her second COVID shot in August. Her first epileptic seizure takes place in December. Yes, sir. And, and there was nothing in between? Mm -mm. No, sir. Nothing. She was healthy. She And that was the time that she was working in gym all the time. She never wanted to be home. She was always out with fam family was huge for her. Um, she always wanted to be around family and be a part of family, and she was rarely ever, ever home home. But then once that first seizure happened, it was more so uh, she kind of stayed home a lot, wasn't going to the gym. She was afraid of having a seizure, even with the medication. She was just, she was afraid to live that life. With that being said, she had a whiteboard in her bedroom. Um, that had a little smiley face on it and said, stay positive. So that has become kind of the logo for her foundation is it would get her down as a mother. I knew that it got her down as her family. We knew that, but 
if you were somebody that if you would just meet her you would never know that because she always had that beautiful smile she always filled the room with that and you would never know that that was do you want to hold her photo up one more time over your microphone there tara a little higher there you go and uh, if you're just tuning in, Tara Rogers is our guest here. Her daughter Cassie passed away in, I think you said May. Yes, sir. Uh, of epileptic uh, seizure. And uh, the found, there's a foundation set up by her mom, Tara, who's with us in studio today, to help raise money for research. And they've got a spaghetti dinner coming up. If you could, uh, you can yep. talk about that event again and some other ones. The spaghetti dinner is, um, it's at the Back Creek Valley Fire, or the Back, not the Back Creek, I'm sorry, the Baker Heights Fire Department. Um, it's the new one right down from the old Kmart. Um, $20 at the door, kids under 10 or $5. All proceeds go to the foundation. We also will have a silent auction, baskets. We have quilts that were made, jewelry that's been donated, snap-on tool items that's been donated, a little bit of everything for everyone. Um, any money from that, which all of that was pretty much donated or bought by me or the family, um, all that money goes to the foundation as well. You mentioned uh, that you didn't know and were concerned if it was hereditary. Is there a way to test to find out? There is. Um, I'm in the process. I have called and left a voicemail with the people who did that autopsy just to see if they can give me some more information from that. Um, with my nephew, we are, we've let the pediatrician know that, you know, epilepsy was a thing. And I don't know if there's testing or if there's just certain things that she would look for in him. Um, but I'm in the process of trying to narrow it down and find out what kind of epilepsy she had to see if it's some is genetic and some is not. So it's just kind of narrowing it down and hoping that we have nothing happen between now and then. Did she have siblings? She had a brother um, and a half, well, three, two half brothers and a half sister. So yes, they are all older and have not had anything like this. So anything else in the family history? Any aunts, uncles, grandparents who had epilepsy? No epilepsy, no seizures in the family whatsoever. Do you have additional fundraisers planned, Tara? I do. Um, we are definitely doing another, the one in May, the biker poker run. Um, and Dairy Queen has, where she was a manager there on Winchester Avenue, they have um, said that they would like to do a few more spirit nights there. So what happens there is 10% of the proceeds go to the epilepsy, or it comes to us to go to the Epilepsy Foundation. Um, when we had the first one, like I said, we raised $1,400 in one night. The coldest night of the year so far it was was very interesting to see the outcome, the busyness, and people, do, they would just come through and they would see the flyer and they would just hand cash to the to the workers. And they we had a jar and just went in there and it all went to the foundation, so. What is your message to parents and uh, folks of your daughter's age listening to this show? Don't ever think that you're doing too much. Always push. Um, as a mother, as a father, you have that instinct. Um, fight, fight for your kids. Don't stop. Um, she's been gone eight months and I'm still fighting. So just fight. If you think that there's something more there, keep going. If that doctor can't find it, go to the next. Have you had uh, contact with the, uh, the larger epilepsy foundation uh, to yes. set up relationships and such? I have, um, they've sent me information. So I will have information at the spaghetti dinner flyers with information for them um they are they've they're very helpful they've been helping in um in lots of ways sending cards and like little um just little sorry to hear about you know kind of thing sympathy cards stuff like that kind of it helps it, it's nice to know that someone's out there that really wants to find what what's the cause behind this and the date once again for the spaghetti dinner i've got about 20 seconds to is the 13th and it's four to eight at the baker heights fire department very good and the facebook page or website to find out more about your daughter is the absolute epilepsy field of sunflower foundation in memory of cassie nicole slevin thank you for coming in today tara thank you it's nine fifty-seven. final minute next